Good morning, Cornerstone North. I trust that you are enjoying the beauty of today, beautiful and sunny. Welcome to our daily devotion, uh, which will be every morning at 10 a.m. except for service days. And so this Sunday, we will continue our uh, live stream services. And uh, why don't we begin with a word of prayer? Uh, we're going to pray for the church. Uh, pray for the world, pray for our family, our friends. Uh, we're just going to pray that God helps us understand. And uh, we believe in the power of prayer. And so we're going to go ahead and pray and ask God to help us. And so why don't we take a moment here, wherever you're at, and let's ask God to, to touch our, our church uh, globally, locally. Let's ask God to touch our family, our friends and let's ask God to use all this to, to reach the lost. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Grateful for another day of life. Thank you for your blessings, Jesus. You've been good to us. You've given us more than we deserve. God, most of us have come from lives that were not pleasing to you, but you gave us another opportunity. I'm asking you, Jesus, to please help me, help everybody paying attention to this lesson help the church locally as well as globally during this time. Help the lost be found, God. Please teach us through your word today. Teach us, God, to obey you. Teach us to learn from you. And God, we believe in that you're gonna do great things through this situation. We give you all the glory, for you are God alone and there's none beside you. We pray this in your precious name and everybody said amen. Okay, today we're gonna drink a little bit of tea and coffee together. Um, let us begin with a couple of quick statements. If you have if you have spent any time in the Bible whatsoever, one of the things that you are going to find if you spend any time reading the Bible is the Bible is filled with inspiring verses, verses that really touch the inward parts of your soul and we those verses are typically the ones that we see shared we see them posted all over social media and they keep us expired they keep us inspired to to continue to push forward in god now this is a good thing this is a very good thing as well as this is a god thing his world his word is given to us for that purpose it wants to help us it inspires to change us transform us it wants to just help us right now one of the things as a new convert that i assumed i used to assume that everybody understood what they were quoting or what they were citing or what they were sharing and i learned that the unfortunate reality is, is that most people don't. And so with that in mind, what I want to do today is I want to help you understand a, a very popular verse, a very important verse. Um, and so this will help you better understand how God can do what he said he would do in the verse. And so today I'd like to share about Solomon's confirmation, Solomon's confirmation and how we can learn from it. Okay. So let us begin with understanding Solomon. Solomon is the son of David, born out of his relationship with Bathsheba. Um, Solomon will, will become the next king of Israel. David will pass the throne to Solomon, as well as his desire to build God a house. David wants to build the Lord a house. God says, you're a bloody man, but you're going to have a son. And this is where we pick the story up. First Chronicles 22 and 9. First Chronicles 22 and 9, God is speaking to David, and this is what he says. Behold, a son shall be born to you, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. For his name shall be Solomon, and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. So, at the outset of this uh, simple lesson, I want you to understand that God was prophesying a time of peace that would fall on Israel. He was letting David know, you, you built Israel, you expanded its borders, you won battles, you took down giants, you did great exploits, you stood 
when everybody else bowed. Um, but there's a, there's a son coming to you, and this son of yours will build and carry on your legacy and your house. Now, this is important because it is extremely applicable to you and I today. Believe it or not, uh, American Christianity or American Pentecost as a whole has enjoyed a time of peace and a time of rest in our country. Um, many of us that were born into this uh, did not get persecuted by other religions. We did not get attacked physically. We were not dragged out. We were not stoned. Uh, we were not thrown tomatoes at. We were not mocked. We were not beat up. You know, the, uh, the, the local religious town gangs did not jump us, right? So many of us, many of us were born into uh, Christianity in a time of peace, okay? And because of that time of peace, we have built beautiful buildings, right? We've built beautiful sanctuaries. We've built awesome buildings, right? I, I don't want to call them churches because the church is the body of Christ. So bit, we've built beautiful buildings, right? And this was not available to a lot of our our forefathers. They, they didn't have the luxuries that we had. They didn't have the access. They didn't have the wealth we had. They didn't have any of those things. But I'll tell you this, they did have some grit and they did have prayer lives and they did have the word of God and they did have boldness and they did have power. And so we have a time of peace and we see the contrast between a David, a man of war, uh, somebody that fights to establish Israel and then somebody that is at peace with everyone around him, kind of like our generation of, of Pentecost or Christianity in America. We don't. We don't have, we're not fighting to establish this. Uh, we're mainstream for most, for the most part now, right? And so I want you to, I want you to see what this does, okay? Uh, because we get to enjoy the splendors of life, we've come a long way. We, man, we have more access than, than our, our founding fathers of this would have ever, ever dreamed of. Now, Second Chronicles seven eleven. Uh, I'm leading you towards 2 Chronicles 7, 14, which is one of the most popular verses you'll ever see posted, okay? God comes to Solomon, right? This, Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord, the king's house, and all that came to Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house, he prosper, prosperously effected. Now watch this, verse 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. I want you to notice verse 12 is revealing. Verse 12 is revealing that God heard Solomon's prayer. Now, as a student of the Bible, we need to ask ourselves, what prayer? What prayer did Solomon pray so that God heard it and responded to it or confirmed it, okay? Now, I don't know about nobody else out there. I just know that when I pray, I like God to speak to me about my prayer. I, I like when God confirms my prayer. I don't like just talking to talk. So let's, let, let's highlight some of Solomon's uh, prayer. That prayer is found in 2 Chronicles 6, okay? 2 Chronicles 6. And, I, and I'm just going to hit a few points. This is a very, it, it's a very beautiful prayer, a very powerful prayer. And, uh, but I'm going to hit a few points on this prayer so that you can see the value of praying to God. Um, verse 14 of Second Chronicles 6, And now, and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven, nor in the earth, which keepest covenant, and showest mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. Uh, look at verse 18. But will God in very deed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heavens of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house which I have built. Look at verse 22. If a man sin against his neighbor and an oath be laid upon him to make him swear, an oath come before thine altar to this house, then hear thou from heaven and do and judge thy servants by requiting the evil and recompensing his way upon his own head. If you keep on reading uh, verse 26, when when the heaven is shut up and there is no rain, locusts, because they have sinned against thee, if they pray towards this place, confess thy name, turn from their sin, uh, which when, when thou dost afflict them, 
Then hear from them from heaven and forgive their sin, thy servants and Israel. Thou hast taught them the good way wherein they should walk, send rain upon the land which thou hast given of thy people for an inheritance. Okay, so you're, you're actually seeing Solomon. Solomon is praying these things. Look at verse 33. Then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, and do all according to the stranger call it for thee. Look at verse 34. If thy people go out to war against their enemies by the way that thou shalt send them, and they pray unto thee towards this city, which thou hast chosen in the house which I have built for thy name, then hear thou from the heavens their prayer, their supplication, and maintain their cause. This verse 35. So as you can see, uh, Solomon is, is he's making it. This is a good prayer life right here. Look at verse 42. O Lord God, turn not away thy face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant. Okay, I want you to notice this prayer. Read it when you get a chance, 2 Second, Second, Second Chronicles 6. Read the prayer. Look how profound his prayer is, okay? This guy knows how to pray. Probably learned that from his dad, okay? Now, look at the response to his prayer, okay? Because the response to your prayer is so important. Look at verse, look at verse 1 of Second Chronicles 7. Now, when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house, and the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. Listen, when you got a fire prayer life, the glory of the Lord fills the house. When you got a fire prayer life, the fire fire comes down from heaven and and this is very this is a prototype of what was going to happen in acts chapter number two verses one through four the outpouring of the holy ghost the feast of pentecost so this is an incredible pattern in scripture look at verse three and when all the children of israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the lord upon the house they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement they worship and they praise the lord saying for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. I want you to notice this. They interpreted God's response as the mercy of God. This is the mercy of God. He's hearing our prayer. He's doing something about it. He's let us speak to him. He's let us speak to him. Now, now we're going to read this popular verse that we hear quoted a lot, okay? Because uh, as you can tell from 2 Chronicles 6, this is a, this is a prayer thing. Second Chronicles 7 and 13 and 14, God is not telling Solomon something new. God is telling Solomon, I heard your prayer. Let me recap. If I shut up the heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locust to devour the land, which is happening in Africa right now, or if I send pestilence among thy people or my people, if my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Okay, let's break down 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, because this is the recipe for resolution. This is the recipe for resolution. God tells Solomon, if all of these things happen as a result of your guys' behavior, mm -hmm. this is the recipe for resolution. It's almost like God is telling Solomon, these things are going to happen. Because anytime you give a group of people rest, anytime you give a group of people prosperity, anytime you give a group of people blessing, they start to abuse blessings. They abuse prosperity. They start, listen, I've seen this as a pastor. I've seen people get financially blessed and they prayed until they got the new car and then they're driving around doing nothing. They prayed until they bought the new house and then they're, they're not doing anything. They've, they, they had a prayer life and then they sacrificed their prayer life because now uh, they're too busy jet skiing or they're too busy traveling or they're too busy. I'm telling you, anytime you give people prosperity, Anytime you give people blessing, anytime you give people a time of peace where they're not having to fight, physically fight stuff, man, people find ways to get distracted and to get carnal. That's just human nature, right? And God is telling Solomon, I know this, you know this, I'm confirming this. If these things start to happen, these are signs 
that y'all got to get right. Okay. Now let us begin with this. If, if if is a conditional statement, if is a contingent statement, if, in other words, if you want this fixed, you're going to have to do what I'm about to tell you. Okay. It's kind of like the doctor, you come to the doctor and he tells you, well, if you want to get, you want to get healthier, you got to do this. Okay. If my people, okay. Now, if my people, let's start with my people, the solution, the solution to what's happening around the world, the solution that's happening to the church is not the government can't fix this. Donald Trump cannot fix this. No legislation can fix this. None of this can fix this. But I'll tell you what can fix this. God's people. If my people, which are called by my name, the Presbyterians can't fix this. The Baptists can't fix this. The Catholics can't fix this. The Trinitarians can't fix this. The Jesus-only people can fix this. The baptized in Jesus' name people can fix this. If my people, which are called by my name, we have been called by his name, we have put on his name upon baptism, we are the people of the name. We are the only group of people in the planet that literally elevates the name of Jesus Christ as the highest name above every name. We, do, we use the name of Jesus for everything, for prayer. We cast out devils in Jesus' name. We heal the sick in Jesus' name. We baptize in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name. We are the Jesus' name people. So if my people, which are called by my name, right, direct association, direct access to power, direct access to everything, if my people, which are called by my name, now here's the first caveat, okay, shall humble themselves, shall humble themselves. If you read 2 Chronicles 6, Solomon is praying about acts of pride that God's people would do, right? And as you saw from there, every time there was an act of pride, if they did this, if they go back and pray, Lord, if they sinned against their neighbor and if they go back and pray, Lord, if they did this and they go back to pray, right? So acts of disobedience or acts of sin are acts of done in pride and so the the remedy or the resolution right is humility if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves so the posture of humility is part of the recipe for resolution so this is why when the pharisees would pray they'd walk into the temple and they would hit their chest and say well i'm so glad i'm not like that sinner jesus said who walked away who walked away justified the prideful person that prayed or the humble person that said, Lord, I'm a sinner, have mercy on me. So part of the recipe of resolution in prayer is humility. It, it's the mindset, the heart, the, mind, the, the spirit of humility. So if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, right? Humble themselves. I, I'm going to humble myself because I don't have it all figured out. I'm going to humble myself because I can't fix. I'm going to humble myself because I recognize my shortcomings. I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to talk to God. I'm going to pray and pray, okay? Now, he, he, prayer, a lot of people pray, right? But there's a difference between prayer with pride and, and prayer out of humility, okay? Uh, Solomon's prayer was a prayer of humility in 2 Chronicles 6. He prayed humbly, God, you're the God of the universe. You're so big. The house I just built you can't contain you. The heavens of heavens can't contain you. There's nobody like you, right? And so what you're seeing here is you're, you're seeing a, a revelation that a, a prayer life without humility is a powerless one. And it's also one that does not fix or change things. It, it's, it's words. It's words. Uh, you know, you, you honor him with your mouth, but your heart is far from, there's no humility there. Okay. So this is part of the recipe of resolution here. So if my people, God's people called by his name, humble themselves, pray, develop that prayer life, seek my face. Now God doesn't have a physical face, right? But so you're seeing here that God is using this as a, an example of a, a, a seeking desire 
to, to see God, a seeking desire to see what God's going to do, a seeking desire to, 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 to see God face to face and, and to get a hold of God. Look at this. Now, this is where it gets a little, a little interesting, okay? Because uh, I'm telling you, that just take this as a student of Scripture. I'm not trying to cast stones. I'm just pointing out, you know, there was just a, a national... There was just a national day of prayer where, where uh, pastors and preachers and, and evangelists and everybody was talking about let's, let's, let's unite and, and let's, let's go to God and let's ask him to, to fix this situation. Okay, well, let, let's, let's, let's get real now. Um, God's not going to fix this situation until everybody that's praying is humbling themselves. Uh, religious organizations being against each other those are works of the flesh. Those are acts of pride. And so why would we call for a national day of prayer when we can't even get along with one another? When we're all supposed to be God's people called by his name, humble and praying and seeking his face. Why would we get together and pray? If I can't go across the street and love a brother that's baptized in Jesus' name, serves the same God. So it, it's... We're saying we want to fix the situation, but we're not fixing the situation, right? Because we're supposed to humble ourselves in this prayer. We're supposed to we're supposed to seek his face during this prayer. And we're supposed to turn from their wicked ways. Oh, let's talk about turning from our wicked ways for a second here. God said, if y'all get to if you guys will get together and humble yourselves and you'll start to pray and you'll seek my face and you actually turn you repent from your wicked ways let's talk about some wicked ways here how about bashing other pastors well hallelujah let's talk about uh being against one another let's talk about religious sex that cast stones at one another uh, let's talk about being double-tongued towards one another. L let's talk about Pentecost being so divided that the Mormons make, make themselves look like the children of Israel more than the people of God do. Let's talk about the divisions among us, the, the power jesting among us. Let's talk about who wants to be the greatest among us, who's preaching the conferences, and who's, who's who, and who, who has the best name or the biggest name? Let's, let's talk about the wickedness that our flesh has produced um, because of our time of rest. Did you know that if we were under persecution, it'd be amazing how, how much better we get along. If, if we were being attacked from all sides, from enemies, it's amazing how uh, UPC and WPF churches would stop squabbling and ALJC and UPC, and, and everybody would stop squaggling because we would be the people of God and we would need each other. But because we, we're in a time of rest with no persecution from outside sources, um, we're like fishermen sitting around a boat waiting to catch something, just fighting among ourselves. And the Bible says that if you want to see God do something, not only do you have to be part of his name, not only do you have to humble yourself, not only do you have to pray, it says here, not only do you have to seek his face, but it also says you got to turn, you got to repent from your wicked ways. So in reality, what, what should be happening right now is across the whole world, the people of God called by his name should be repenting. We should be repenting from our wicked ways. We should be repenting from the way we've been treating brothers and sisters in Christ we should be repenting about the things we said about one another. We should be repenting about the arrows we, we threw at others. We should be repenting. We should pick up the phone and call brothers across the country that we separated with and said, Hey, brother, I just want you to know that I love you. Please forgive me for anything I've done to offend you. Um, I want to turn from this wicked way, this work of the flesh, please. Um, you know, time is short. Uh, God is coming back, and I just don't want to be wicked. I, I, I don't want to behave that way. You're my brother. You're part of the sheepfold. Man, please forgive me. That's what should be happening. Um, getting together across the world and, and just praying, God, heal our land. God, heal our land. God, heal our land. God, fix this. God, fix the situation. God's looking down from heaven saying, uh, I, I'd like to see some behavior modifications first. Let's, let's, let's get y'all to change your behavior. 
because uh, I'm not okay with all of this stuff you guys have been doing. And so this is what he says. Then, then, and only then, 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 only then, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. 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 Pay attention to this. Sin is the cause of what we're seeing. Sin. Okay? And will heal their land. It's amazing that when God forgives our sins, healing takes place. Physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, spiritually, geographically. So, in conclusion, if we want to see God honor His Word and hear us from heaven and forgive our sins and heal our lands, uh, then we have to be willing to follow instructions. Just as Noah built the ark exactly how God instructed him to, we too must follow God's instructions to see our prayers heard. And so I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you today. If you are part of the church of the living God, if you are one of the people called by his name, if you're somebody that belongs to the sheepfold, if you're somebody that you consider yourself one of God's children, I would ask you today, I would ask you to do this. I would ask you to turn, to repent from the wicked stuff that you did towards brothers and sisters or just towards people. And I'm going to do the same thing because I actually want God to heal our land. I, I want God to heal our churches. I want God to protect us. I want, I want to see the harvest God has for us. And I want to honor God's word uh, by obeying him. And I want to turn from my wicked way. And, 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 and I hope this works. I, I hope this touches your heart and you pick up the phone and you call somebody and you say, you know what, man? God doesn't like division. So we may not agree on stuff, but I'm for you. I love you. I believe in you. I, I wonder if you'll pick up the phone and call somebody in your church that you, you guys can't even talk, but you go to the same church uh, and you guys both pray. But the problem with your prayer is nobody's humbling themselves and falling in love with one another again. I, I wonder if churches can heal today from this little little revelation of Solomon's confirmation. Pick up the phone. You know what, sister? I'm so sorry that I said this stuff I said about you. You know what, brother? I'm so sorry I acted like that towards you. You know what, brother? We're God's people. We need one another, man. I just want to humble myself. I want to turn from that behavior. I want God to heal your family, my family, this nation. Uh, time is short. We're all in this together. Please forgive me. So I want, I want to encourage you today to learn from, Sol from Solomon's confirmation that if we want God to honor our prayers, we have to be willing to honor his instructions. So I love every one of you. I hope this helps you. I hope you pick up the phone or text somebody. And uh, I hope the healing process begins in your, in your personal life as well as in your church, in your house, and in this country. And, uh, and I believe God will help us. So God bless you in Jesus' name.